Hi everyone, welcome back to Data Leveling. So in today's video, we will see the different ways where we can upscale our images using Confi UI. What we want to achieve is like the image on the most right, where it looks sharper, crispier, and it just looks better overall. For those of you that are new to Stable Diffusion Image Upscaling, how this works is that the algorithms will diffuse information across the entire image, iteratively refining the details without introducing unwanted artifacts. All the models and links that I used will be provided in the description. I assume you have already installed Confi UI and Confi UI Manager, and if you have not, you can watch my previous video on how to install those. Alright, so let's get straight into it. The first thing we want to do here is open up Confi UI Manager and search for Impact. We will be installing the Impact nodes. Next, we will search for Ultimate and install the Ultimate Stable Diffusion Upscaler nodes. Lastly, we will search for Control and install the Control Net Processor nodes. Now that we have installed all the dependencies, we will first generate a base image. You can choose a different checkpoint model and prompt here, but I will be using the Epic Realism model to generate a portrait image. I will also set the seed to 1 with fixed control so that you can reproduce the same results. We will first see what a basic image upscaler does and we will target to upscale the model by two times. We can see that in the full image that there are a lot of pixelation in the image. What we can try next is to upscale the image using an AI model. We can drag out an upscale model loader node and select the upscale model you want to use. So these models are trained on a massive amount of blur and sharp image pairing, specifically for the upscaling purpose. The models can be downloaded from this website over here. In my case, I am using the 4x ultra sharp model and because of the way this node is designed, we cannot change the upscale factor so we will have to downscale the image by 0.5 to have a fair comparison of the results. Another way we can upscale an image is by upscaling the latent from the case sampler and decode it into an image. We can see that the result of a direct latent upscale outputs a blurry image and this is expected. I will show you a better way to upscale latents. We will be using an iterative latent upscaler that can be found under Impact Pack's upscale section. This method of upscaling will provide more control and precision in the upscaling process as it gradually increases the size of the latents rather than doing it in a single jump. For the upscaler node, we will be using the Pixel K Sampler upscale provider and for the parameters, I will set it to be similar as the original K Sampler while adjusting only the sampler steps to be 50 and the denoise to be around 0.1. This denoise refers to how much change you are willing to accept with respect to the base image. As the quality of my base image is already quite good and have most of the features I want, I will want my upscaled image to be more consistent with the base image, therefore setting the denoise level to be lower. If your base image is of a low quality at around 128 or 256 pixels, you will want to set the denoise strength to a higher level of around 0.4 to 0.5. This is because your image is probably blurry and will require additional artificial details to each neighboring pixels of your base image. As for the steps of the iterative upscaler, you can set it to a number between 1 to 3. These steps refer to the number of upscaling iteration. So in our target upscale factor of 2 and our steps being 2, we will increase 0.5 on each iteration. Other than iterative latent upscaling, 
we can also perform iterative image upscaling using this node over here. The input pixels should be linked to the base image output and everything else can be kept the same. We can see that this image for the latent and image upscaling using the iterative way is sharper and not as pixelated as the previous examples. The next method we will be using is the ultimate stable diffusion method. We can search for the node by typing ultimate. I will be reusing the same parameters used for the sampler configuration and keep everything else as default. We can see that the result from the ultimate stable diffusion upscaling method is very sharp and able to keep most of the details. But if in some cases where the upscaled image have too much noise and stray too far from the original image, what we can use is something called a control net. When you click add nodes and go to the control net preprocessor section, we can see a lot of different options. I will use the AUX preprocessor as it is kind of like a base node that lets you change your preprocessor option easily. If you are new to control net, how a control net works is that you will retain the image details based on a guiding image that you provide. This guided image is not your base image in its raw form. It has to go through some preprocessing steps to bring out final details of the base image like edges, shapes and contours for the control net to work properly. In this example, I will be using line art preprocessor and I will have to use a corresponding line art control net model. This is an example of what the line art guiding image will look like. As we can see, the shape and edges of the model is clearly defined and these details are what we want to keep in our final output. You may also test out other preprocessors and see which one is able to draw out final details of your image. The next step is to use the guided image with a control net model. We can do that by creating an apply control net node. The input image will be linked to the guided image, the input conditioning to the positive prompt and for the input control net model, we will use a control net model loader node. Since I am using LineArt preprocessor, I will use a LineArt control net model. This is the website where you can download all the control net models. The models are the file that ends with .pth. I would also recommend to install all the models so that you can try out all kinds of different combinations. We will then link up the output conditioning to the positive prompt of our iterative case samplers and the ultimate stable diffusion upscaler nodes. The control net strength controls how much of the guiding image is followed relative to the prompt. Higher strength means that the output image will follow the guiding image more and the lower strength means it will follow the prompt more. Now if let's say you do not want to use an upscaling model or any external custom nodes, you can use this technique called high resolution fix. What this does is that we will go through two rounds or two paths of case samplers after the latent upscale step. The denoise here have to set to be at least 0.4 for the image to be non-pixelated. I personally am not a fan of this method due to the huge denoise requirement leading to the loss of fine details. By looking at the comparison of the results, you can see that the iterative methods and the ultimate stable diffusion upscaler method works better. The results are also an upgrade to the default base and model upscaling method. For the high resolution fix method, the result may not be as good if we are comparing the details to the base image, but if we are using it with respect to the prompt, the image looks sharp and can be used directly. I will now change the prompt a little and we can see that the upscaling effect still works pretty well. If let's say you already have an existing image that you want to load that is not AI generated, you can simply replace the case sampler with a load image node and replace the decoding node with an encoding one. 
I will use a low res image of the AI goat Andrew Ng and try to upscale his image to a higher resolution. Personally for me, I think that the best methods are the Ultimate Stable Diffusion Upscaler and the Iterative Image or Latent Upscaler, both with a control net. If you want to keep things simple, just go with the Ultimate one. The upscaling model also plays a big part in the kind of details you will have, so try out different upscaling models to see which one produces the best result for you. If you learned something from this video, do help to leave a like and subscribe for more content like this. It will really help the channel grow and serves as motivation for me as well. If you face any difficulties following the videos, do also leave a comment and I will try my best to help you. And remember, don't stop leveling up.